Hey Nathan here, welcome back to another flocking artificial intelligence video. And in this video we will be discussing the concepts of separation. Now separation is a steering behavior in that if two entities get too close to each other, they will be forced apart. You will be calculating a vector that is 180 degrees pointing away from the other entity, and you will push the uh, other entity, you will push them apart. So the concept is, for each entity in a flock, we will be looking at other entities, and if the other entities are within the separation distance, we will calculate a vector that will be 180 degrees away from the entity. That way we can safely avoid getting too crowded. Okay, so let's discuss this out. Let's discuss this concept in great detail. So I'm going to put up two entities here. One entity has a X value of 11 and a Y value of 19. Another entity is going to have a X value of 23 and a Y value of 32. So first thing we need to do is we need to have an entity to target. So we're going to use the 11 comma 19 entity. So that entity looks at every other entity in the flock. In this case we only have one more entity which is the 23 comma 32 entity. So we need to look at the 23,32 entity, and we need to see, is it less than our separation distance? So let me throw up a value here. For example, let's say our separation distance squared is 2,500. So let's calculate the distance squared between these two entities. Now we only, the reason we're doing this with squares is that as of right now, we do not need the absolute distance between the two entities. We just want to see if one entity... We're not looking for a value here. We're just looking for if one is less than another. And we can do that with squares because square root is very CPU intensive. So we're saving CPU cycles dealing with squares. So the separation distance squared is 2,500. So let's calculate the distance between the two entities squared. So we take 23 minus 11 and square that. That'll give us our x component. And then we take our 32 minus 19 and we square that. And that'll give us our y component. We add those two values together. And that gives us 313. So 313 is definitely less than 2,500. So in that case, we have succeeded our test. If the entities are too close to each other, we need to calculate a vector pointing away from the entity, 180 degrees away from the entity. So that is just the source entity, the 11 comma 19 entity, the entity that needs to be pushed away, minus that vector minus the target entity, the entity that we are too close to. So 11 comma 19 minus 23 comma 32, that will give us a negative 12 comma negative 13. That's 180 degrees from our target entity. So that vector will push us away from the entity in such a way that we are guaranteed to be it's the best vector to use to be pushed away from the entity. Now, typically with the other algorithms, we would normalize this. Now that will give us a nice, clean, smooth transition. It 
will look nice and we will it'll look like it's slowly rotating it's slowly separating it's not an instantaneous thing so we normalize that in order to make it a smooth transition if you are one pixel away from another entity that will give us the same value as if we were 2,000 pixels away from the entity. Remember, in this case, we are still using the 2,500 distance separation in this example. So what I'm saying here is that if you are very, very close, you are within touching distance, you are too cramped, the force that you will be separating will be the same as if you were barely in the separation distance. We do not want that to happen. If you are way too close, if you can't even move because the un other entity is too close, you want to have a force so great that will be an immediate push between the two entities. So we need to scale the amount of force depending on if you are close or barely inside the separation distance. So the closer we get to the entity, the more intense the force will be. You know, if you're way too crowded with two other people around you, you would have much of a force to get people away from you than if you were just a little bit uncomfortable. So when two entities are, the closer two entities get, the more intense the force will be that will push them away. So that will be a scale value that we need to calculate. And in order to calculate that, we need to calculate a percentage of how far in to the separation distance we are. In order to get that, that percentage, we need to take the square root of the distance between the entities squared, Remember, we squared that before when we did our initial test. So we need to square root that value, that 313 value we tested before. And then we divide that by the square root of the separation distance. See, we already tested if we are inside the separation distance. We dealt with squares because square root is so CPU intensive. We only care about if the two entities are within the separation distance. We do not care how much when we test. So we avoid the square root there because we're just testing two entities. But when the two entities succeed, we need to go a step farther and actually do the CPU intensive task of square rooting these. So we need to square root 313 and square root the 2,500 separation distance and divide those values and that will give us our percentage of how far into the separation distance we are. Remember, that gives us a percentage in decimal form. That's what we're looking for. 0 0.35. We are, we are 35 percent into the separation distance. Now we want this we want the scale to be smaller the farther you are in to the separation distance. So if we are 85% into the separation distance that means we are closer to the entity than if we were 35% into the distance. But we do not want that value to be increasing. We want it to be decreasing. Because if we are 100% into the distance, that will result in 1. Now, in order to do that, in order to prevent that from happening, we need to take the scale value and we need to subtract that from 1. So 1 minus the scale value needs to give us our final result. So 1 minus 0 
0.353836 will give us 0 0.646164. That's our final scale result. This value will be in the denominator. So any of the, you that are into math, the smaller the denominator gets, the larger the result will be. If we take 1 divided by 1, that will give us a result of 1. If we take 1 divided by 0 0.5, that will give us a result of 2. If we take 1 divided by 0 0.25, that will give us a result of 4. So the smaller the denominator gets, the more intense, the larger the result will be. The concept is the farther we are in to the separation distance means the closer we are to the two entities. And the closer we are to the two entities, the more intense we want the force to be that will separate them. However, the farther we are into the separation distance means the larger that initial scale value will be. If we are 80% into the separation distance, that means we are pretty close. We are a lot closer than if we were 35% in to the separation distance. If we are 80% in, that will be a result of 0 0.8. Now that will give us a smaller force than 0 0.35. That is why we need to have 1 minus the scale value to give us our final result. If we are 85, or I'm sorry, if we are 80% in, we subtract that from 1, 1 minus 0 0.8, and that will give us 0 0.2. That is small, that will be a more intense force. If we are 99% in, we are right next to the other entity. We are so close. The force needs to be very large. So we take 1 minus 0 0.99, and that will give us 0 0.01. That is going to be a very intense force vector that we'll use to separate the two entities. So that is why we have to subtract the scale from one, a 100% value, because that will give us our difference. Think of it as how much is left, how much personal space is left for that entity. 1 minus scale will give us how much personal space left for that entity. If we are 90% in, 10% is left for that entity. 10% of its personal space is left for that entity. That is not a lot. The desired result is 100% personal space free. So 10%, only 10% only available, the force needs to be massive. You're, that entity needs to say, get away from me quickly. You're very close to me. You're in my personal space. Get away from me now. That force needs to be so great. So this is what we are, are looking for. How much personal space is left for the entity so we use 1 minus the scale value to give us our final result. All right, just like any other algorithm, any other steering behavior, we need to calculate the unit vector, also known as normalizing the vector. So we need to normalize the vector that we have created before, which is known as the heading vector. The heading vector, which was the negative 12, negative 13, the vector that will force, that is going to be used to force the entity away from the other entity. So we need to make a unit vector of that heading vector. So let's normalize it. So we take that vector divided by its length, which is the square root of 313. That will give us a result of negative 0 0.67828, that's the x component, 
and negative 0 0.734803. That is the y component. Now to calculate the final force vector, we need to take that unit vector, divide by the scale, the final result we got from the scale. The smaller the scale will be, the more intense that final force vector will be. Okay, so that unit vector divided by the scale. So negative 0 0.67828 divided by 0 0.646164 will give us a result of negative 1.049703. That is the x component. Negative 0 0.734803 divided by 0 0.646164 will give us negative 1.137178. That resulting force vector is what will be used to push the entity away. So to recap the basics of the concepts, if two entities are within a separation distance from each other, we need to calculate a vector that points 180 degrees away to give us the optimal direction to push the entities apart. It's 180 degrees because that's the optimal angle to push the entities away. We normalize the vector, but we need to scale that vector depending on how far, cl how close the entities are. The closer the entities are, the more intense that push needs to be. If you are just barely inside the separation distance, that push doesn't have to be so great. But if you are 99% into the separation distance, if that other entity only has 0.011% of its personal space left to relax, then that push needs to be so great. It needs to be so intense, you need to separate immediately. So the closer the two entities are, the more intense that push needs to be. So that is the concept of separation steering behavior and the mathematics behind it. All right, next thing we will discuss the algorithm. So I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.